Fans of Dubious Gambits everywhere are celebrating today because we're going to be talking about a brand new opening that you can play, one that shares a lot of similarities with the Stafford Gambit. Now, in case you didn't get the memo, the Stafford Gambit is an opening that you can play after E4, E5, where when white plays knight to F3, you play knight to F6. And after the recapture on E5, instead of playing the typical Petrov move order where you play D6, you kick the knight away, you take on E4, you can instead offer a pawn, this is the Stafford Gambit, with the move knight to C6. And the main point of this opening is that after this recapture, you will be playing for a massive middle game attack as black. You are going to be bringing the bishop out to c5. If white ever gets castled, you're going to be playing aggressive moves like h5, knight g4, queen h4. You can imagine how black would get a very large initiative in an opening like this. And this is something that's been popular for a while now, popularized by the legend himself, Eric Rosen, who I must give a huge shout out to. Uh, so a big thanks to Eric for recently putting on the map this brand new opening that instead of knight to f6, you can also play this crazy move bishop to c5 and there's going to be a lot of similarities between this opening which is called the bush gas gambit and the stafford gambit the point is you can get stuff that is very similar only instead of having get the having got the knight out right away you decided to develop the bishop to c5 instead so a lot of these lines are actually going to transpose back into a stafford gambit um, but there's also quite a lot of room for uh, unique and different positions that you can get. And actually, a lot of the lines that we're going to be looking at today are going to be some of the craziest, wildest things that you've ever seen before. Um, but before we get into that, I do need to make two quick observations just about this position as a whole. After bishop to c5, you'll notice I got the database here, so you can check out all of the games. Most players are actually not accepting the gambit. Bishop to c4 appears to be the most popular move. But maybe more dramatic than that, I've only just heard about this like a week ago. There's a million games in the database. This is one of the most popular openings of all time, and I bet most people haven't even heard of it, or at least don't know the name of the Bush Gas Gambit. And uh, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about Bishop to C4, so we'll start our journey here. But then we're going to come back and we're going to look at what happens if the opponent does accept the Gambit. Now, after Bishop to C4, the opponent declines the Gambit. Black here can decide to be sensible. You can play d6. You can play knight to c6. You can say, I apologize for gambiting upon. I would now like to protect it. But let's be honest, you didn't click on this video to see a sensible chess opening. You're here for something dubious, something that probably loses by force. So you want to look at the move knight to f6. And this can lead to some of the craziest, wildest things. Because here white has the option of taking on e5. And suddenly the f7 pawn comes under fire from a knight knight and the bishop. So again, you can maybe imagine some players, okay, time to renew our sense of sensibility with something like castles, maybe something like d5. Uh, but here you can also go wild and play this as if it were a Traxler Gambit. Now, this is not quite a Traxler Gambit, but if knight to c6, you can go ahead and offer this f-pawn. This leads to some of the craziest, wildest things. Some of these things are so wild that I'm actually going to need to make a second video just on the Stafford meets the Traxler variation. Uh, so if you do want to see that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Helps out a ton, and you'll get some pretty amazing things in the future. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of a tease as to what can happen. There's obviously a lot of possibilities here, two very reasonable ways of... Uh, attacking this pawn but this is not a traxler gambit in the traxler the knight is on g5 and that does make a difference and leads to some other crazy wild complications but just to tease you with one line the main line of this opening is knight takes f7 at least the most popular line but here black can play this very interesting move bishop takes f2 and if you have any experience in the traxler you'll know that some people do prefer to reject this bishop um, because if you do grab it, which is the most popular, you're going to get hit with knight to e4. And you can begin to see how this can get very complicated, very tricky, and how it might be very easy for opponents to slip up. So here, most players are playing king to g1. This is the correct move. But now uh, we can play queen to h4. And we are trying to play for this checkmating attack. And what's interesting about this position is that most players are messing up. Queen e2 or queen to f3 are the most popular moves that have been played in this position, but they both fail for the same reason. After queen e2, for example, we can play knight to d4. 
not only are we attacking the queen, but we still have this threat on f2. We're trying to checkmate the king. We've now introduced the idea that we can take on c2, which would win the rook in the corner. And if we're given time, we're going to be able to bring our rook into the game so you can see how deadly this might possibly be. For example, uh, most players are playing queen to f1. You have to go somewhere where you're keeping control over the f2 square. But now we have time for rook to f8, and suddenly there's a big pin here going on on the f file. And it doesn't really end here. The lines continue to get crazy because if d3, which is supernatural move, Black is winning if only he can find an absolutely amazing combination from here. So here is Black. You may want to pause and see if you can figure this out. I'll give you a big hint as to how you might come about the right answer here. Uh, we would love to take this knight. However, it is currently defended by two of these pieces, so the most logical piece to try to remove from the defense of f7 would be the bishop on c4. And you do have a brilliant way of doing it. You can play the move pawn to b5, where our intention is clearly we are going to take this bishop and then take this knight. If you are to retreat, we'll be able to recapture it this way. So you would imagine White would be playing the move bishop to d5. And this has actually occurred in two games, and both players have come up with the absolutely brilliant bishop to b7. This is the move that will finally remove this defender of the knight. So if you are to ever recapture this, you're going to get hit with rook takes f7, and suddenly white is not going to be able to both save the queen and defend the f2 square. So this is some crazy wild stuff. Again, there's going to be a lot more of this. So uh, check out the channel in the future if you want another video just on that particular opening. But let's head back to uh, the bishop c5 move order, and let's go ahead and see what happens if the opponents do decide to capture on e5. This is probably the most logical thing when there's a gambit. Generally, you do want to accept it. And here you'll also notice black is just doing wacky stuff. <laughs> Neither side, there's so many games, everybody's just doing uh, some ridiculous stuff. Queen to h4 is the most popular move. I get it, but that allows d4. Uh, bishop takes f2 is a popular move. I get it, but it doesn't really quite work. Uh, queen e7 is popular. Again, d4. I don't really get it. Uh, people are just doing some crazy wacky stuff. Perhaps the most logical way to continue if you're going to be playing in gambit style from this position would be to play the move knight to c6. And here again, this is like, I guess, the main line of the Bushgas Gambit. This has actually been given a new name now. This is the Chiodini Gambit. And there actually is a little bit of a decision here for White. So we should slow down and try to understand this from White's point of view. White now needs to decide whether they should continue to accept and take this knight, or if they could play a move like knight to f3 and just drop back. They both have pros and cons. The most natural way would be to take, because after you take, you get to regain the initiative in a way as white, or you at least get to maintain tempo by now having it be your move and you get to decide what you're gonna develop and how the game will proceed from here. If you do decide to go back, then it will be black that now gets to decide how the game should progress from this point. So you can imagine most players would be deciding to take here. I also should mention there's another portion of people that are playing knight takes f7. And this is actually a tricky move Unfortunately, it doesn't work for white. So white's trick here is that if you recapture, you're going to get hit <laughs> with queen to h5. And this is going to be winning back some of the material here. So this would be a big mistake by black. Now, fortunately, we do have a really good move. So this is a nice trick to keep in mind just in case the players do decide to get a little wacky. But you can actually ignore the knight temporarily, play queen to f6, make a threat of checkmate and only then regain the knight on the next turn. So white doesn't have time to win any more material with that knight. He has to defend against mate and then the knight on f7 will be captured and black should be able to win this game. So a nice little trick, but it doesn't quite work for white. So what happens if they do decide to accept our gambit? We'll also come back and look at knight to f3 in just a moment. Well, okay, we are going to be recapturing. And again, a surprise. Everybody makes mistakes every step of the way in this opening and in large amounts. There are a lot of people, this is about a quarter of the people, I guess. Uh, it's 2,000 people out of 8,000 games have been playing Bishop 2 C4. And Black again gets to make a very interesting choice. You can now win back 
some material. This would be the easiest, perhaps the most sensible option for black. You can use this little tactic of bishop takes f2. Whenever you got the bishop on c5, you're always looking at this recapture. And here, as black, we win material back by the means of queen to d4. And after the king goes wherever, uh, we recapture the bishop. Still, after like d3, we are going to need to go somewhere, but we have regained the pawn. So you can imagine you can get some position like this, get the rest of your pieces out, decide which way to castle is black, and you should have a very reasonable game. However, I know a lot of people out there might be some dubious gambiteers that do prefer to be a pawn down. That's, I mean, you played the bush gas gambit after all, maybe you want to be a pawn down. I should also mention that while this might be the safest and most sensible move, there's also other ideas like knight to f6. And this has some ideas that whatever white decides to do, you can tell the most popular moves are castling in d3. We can play for one of those typical attacks we saw at the very beginning of the lecture. For example, just to give one line, after d3, d3 you can imagine knight to g4 going immediately after this f pawn and here most people but 77 percent are going to be blundering and castling right away and just to show you how quickly white can come under fire and just how fast you can lose a game of chess you can play queen to h4 here attacking h2 for uh for a checkmating attack, but also adding three attackers on the F2 square. So whenever you get a position like this, it's always going to be winning for black because after white plays a move like H3 trying to defend, you can always hit them with an attack on F2. And here, not only is there this giant threat of a discovery here, we're on the queen. We're probably also threatening knight takes H3. So a whole lot of bad things here are happening to white. Uh, just to continue it, because you can see <laughs> another pretty line. After rook takes f2, queen takes, king will go somewhere. You can here play an absolutely brilliant move for black. And this is one, another kind of position where people are generally missing the, uh, the strongest move. And this is a brilliant, beautiful move. If you want to really finish off a game in beautiful fashion, in this position, you want to play bishop to g4 and this is an amazing move hanging the bishop two different ways but it really can't be recaptured uh the point is the queen now where is she gonna go she how is she gonna stay on the back rank to defend against mate if she does come off you're gonna hit him with this checkmate and the other beautiful point is that after this recapture you got the bishop on this diagonal so all you need to do is add a queen into the attack queen to h4 here is checkmate so there's a lot of beautiful stuff a lot of quick mates uh, that can happen if they do decide to accept this gambit. Now, I do want to show uh, another little special thing. This, don't worry, we've just changed the scene. This is the first ever Bush Gash Gambit. So this was a game that was played between Eugen uh, Bush and David Graham Bard. Um, Bush was actually a chess teacher and he worked for like the munich chess club he's a german player and this is a game that he played in 1906 the first example of the bush gas gambit and what surprised me the most about the opening portion of this game was that after this capture knight to c6 white even though this was 1906 did not continue to take stuff which is what i guess i would typically expect for the time period but instead White went back to f3. And this actually got me excited because as I was kind of studying this from the black side, I'm thinking, okay, but what happens? It's a typical antidote in the Stafford to just go back. What if they do it here? Um, and what we're going to see is black comes up with a really good plan. The basic plan in the opening is to attack e4 as much as possible. So he brings out the queen, knight to, uh, sorry, queen to e7. And after knight to c3, knight to f6 and black is just going about putting as much pressure as possible on this pawn if needed you can always play d5 later if white does play something like d3 you're going to go for maximal central pressure now here white got a little bit clever i'm actually going to hide the database for now uh so as to not give away too many of the fun surprises but white played this very interesting move um, pawn to d4 and i do believe white here thought that he was potentially tricking black because now, after the most obvious move, knight takes e4. The point is, you don't have time to take my bishop because I'm going to have some discoveries um, by taking on c3. White had this idea in mind of playing knight to d5. And it looks, at least at first blush, like maybe black has made a mistake. Because all of a sudden, the queen is under attack. 
The uh, pawn on c7 is under attack, which could lead to some sort of forking opportunities. Also, the bishop on c5 is hanging. And it doesn't appear that black has any meaningful discoveries. You can take a look around, but nothing really seems to work uh, sufficiently. So what is the deal? Well, black did find the only move, but it's a good move. And it's bishop to b4, getting the bishop out of the way and delivering a check. Now, there's no time for white to play a move that maybe would be natural like c3, because here black is going to be able to win a pawn. Now, when we take here on c3, for example, this is not what happened in the game, white would be able to capture a queen, black recaptures a queen, this is a discovery, so white will have to take back here, and now after you recapture this knight with something, we've actually won a pawn as black because we took that c3 pawn. So because that's impossible, White decided to play uh, bishop to d2, which looks sensible as well. And it still feels like there's a lot of dangers looming for black. There's a lot of lines that just don't quite work. What are we going to do? All of our stuff is still kind of hanging. Uh, and if we take here, which is exactly what happened, white is just going to take our queen. But this is what happened. Uh, black sacrificed the queen, and he's actually now going to get a lot of uh, material for it. He already took one minor piece on d2. Now he takes on f3. This is a check, it's double check, discoveried. So white is gonna have to do a forced bond cloud, king to e2. And now before recapturing this knight, we save this guy, we take on d4. King has to continue to come up, he can't go back. And now after we recapture this, you'll notice black has actually one material. It is three minor pieces and a pawn for black. But also maybe more importantly, what the heck is going on with this guy? He's on d3. Uh, so the game continued with c3, kicking the knight back, no problem. You run your king back to c2, no worries. We castle g3 and now d5, another interesting moment in the game. Black is offering a pawn, but he's also just getting this guy into the game. And I'm imagining that he actually had uh, a lot of dangerous ideas if white did decide to grab this guy. In the game, bishop to d3 is what was played. But if queen takes d5, black has uh, the opportunity, I'm not sure what he would have done here, but has opportunities to play move like knight to d4, with the main idea being that if you do recapture, uh-oh, there's this other fork on the b4 square. So this is the kind of stuff that's in the position. And as white, if you don't recapture this knight in a position like this, you have to either block your rook in by moving your king back uh, in front of your rook, or you have to go somewhere on the d file, which doesn't look uh, very nice to do because, okay, rook d8 is coming pretty quickly. Black also has all sorts of moves to get a initiative right out of the, the gate here. But instead, what happened in the game was he decided to develop the bishop to d3. Now after rook to d8, we saw f4. White is going to continue charging down the board and try to get this knight to move away. But d4 played anyway, f5, and now another interesting moment for black. Black does decide to capture this pawn. And after this, hits you with knight to b4. So temporarily sacrificing the knight, knowing that after this recapture, boom, he was going to hit you with rook to d3. And now white is going to be forced to trade the queen away. Uh, the only other option, look how beautifully the knight is preventing the king from running back to c2. So the other option would be to go here, not only losing the queen, but certainly there has to be a mate here. And in fact, the simplest way to get there, or at least the fastest way to get there, is after check, king to b5, instead of doing one of these, there's a very nice, beautiful mate that could have been played here. It's a pawn mate. After the check, you can play b5, take a look at all the squares, they're all covered. Something like this would be checkmate. So for that reason, white had to give up a queen, decided to take here, didn't take back right away, kind of funny. Um, and after this recapture, this is where white decided to give up the game. You're down one point of material already. You're going to be losing another one, but all of these pieces are going to very quickly come into the game. And that's the end of things. So that was actually the very first bush gas gambit everywhere. It's a very cool, interesting idea. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think about it. So is this going to be the new Stafford gambit? Is this taking over? I don't know. You let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. If you're feeling trapped like a queen. No blunders, only sacrifice and see Well, you may have the blues Never be a chicken when you lose